Welcome to Cranial Pasta. I am Dr. Krankenstein, your host, and this is my co-host, Morby. Hello, and welcome to the show. I used to be Dr. Krankenstein's lab partner until the accident that nearly killed me. Fortunately, he was able to save my brain and put it in a jar. And together, we are going to review bad science that we see in Hollywood movies. And in our first movie, we're going to talk about this scene in Jurassic Park. Yeah, now this is a great movie, and I highly recommend it for anyone who hasn't seen it. But it's not without its scientific flaws. This scene, they are climbing over an electric fence when the power is suddenly turned back on. The little boy is electrocuted and sent flying away from the fence. This is totally unscientific. Let's first start by looking at some of Dr. Krankenstein's pitiful drawings so that we can see how electric fences really work. Hey, I am a mad scientist, not an artist. Why don't you do better? Let me think, because I don't have any hands. Okay, so in the case of an electric fence, you have high voltage transformer as the positive lead connects to the fence and the negative lead connects to the ground. So I painted the lines red to indicate that they are positively charged. If you walk up and touch the fence, the electricity will travel through your body to the ground where the circuit will be completed, giving you a nasty shock. But what if you were not touching the ground? Exactly! You can see that the little boy is touching the fence and nothing else. It's like a bird sitting on a power line. A person might ask, why do bugs get electrocuted when they fly into a bug zapper? Ah, and I happen to have just such a device that I can show. Here we go. The main difference with the bug zapper is that it has both positive and negative electrodes. And when the bug touches both the electrodes, the circuit is complete and the bug is zapped. You can clearly see in this scene that the fence has only a single conductor, so there is no circuit to be completed. I think we can easily say that this scene has been debunked. But I'd like to show you the scene again in slow motion. Obviously, we know the scene is fake, but it's interesting to see that the sparks don't actually come from the boy's hands. They probably used pyrotechnics on the back side of the wires, just inches away from his hands. So that is one scene from one movie down. So now we have only a few thousand left to go. See you next time.